It's a crypto sniper. In this video, I'm going to take you into the analysis of Bitcoin. We're going to also look at the lower time frames of Bitcoin. We're also going to have to take a peek at Ethereum and the relationship between Ethereum and Bitcoin and point out also how interestingly as silver broke out of its continuation structure um, at, uh, recently, Ethereum started to turn and show similar degrees of strength. How Ethereum is the, the boss of the alt markets is the second tier behind Bitcoin, the God market, in the same way silver is to gold. It's going to be interesting. We're going to take a look at what we warned you of uh, in our last video, um, may be possible in terms of Bitcoin and why, when we released that video some uh, time ago, that it would not be a wise time to enter leverage longs into Bitcoin and, and or other cryptos. Uh, and in actual fact, we said you may get a dip opportunity, which could see you get your investment longs a little lower down if you were patient. Let's go have a look at what we said last time in the Crypto Sniper. So here we are. E5K runs across through there. Be warned, if you jump in now after the third and weakest, we talk about the magic of the number of three. If you jump in now after the third and weakest move up with a, also the weakest pullback, didn't have much of a pullback yet, consolidation. This had much more selling out, the bloodletting was released, the pressure was released inside that sell-off and you actually had a final capitulation there and that allowed you to snap with real vigor. You've had only minor sell-offs now, minor sell-offs. You can go and put speculative orders. You can go and put speculative orders in these areas. The neckline just below it up to 27 and a half potentially and you could get a dip back there could be always news in and around that that's your warning it's not the time for leverage trades long do not ape in and say that's it francis says 40k 42 and a half possibly all the way to the moon no okay so the warning was we could start to get a little bit of a slowing and a little bit of a pullback let's go have a look at the charts for ourselves and see how things are looking now it's early it's not dramatic it's minor it's not looking like it's lost its stuff completely but this is the bitcoin chart and we have been warning about the structure of a potential rising wedge this is the warning that we've been uh, suggesting you ought to keep your eye out for not the best dressed line let's try one more time bit better and the steepness of this line coming through here could imply that that's already a form of break i've gone with a reasonably fat line um so typically those would be your key points that i would mark as uh events of contact that is your capping ascending grind line you've got a lot of events of contact there it's a well-established line and what tends to happen is you have a little rest before you beat this guy out um, and of course over here i drew it a bit tight to the the recent topping behavior i could have tilted that slightly um, so we talk about a splitter that's in the middle it should run something like this this gives you the aggregate gradient that you've been uh, facing over here so for those surges essentially you've got to watch three key surges three key surges so these were your bull surges very low vol by the way over here that was the precursor to the big move you started to go parabolic uh, on a on a this level here then you started to run into a little bit of traffic you got your first pullback here but you managed to make a higher high there so that's actually your surge one you had it's a, a good correction and that made that high but you went marginally higher high that's your second run uh, so that was a good correction in between then you went largely sideways and you've made your smallest run so far that was the point i was making when you uh, just saw the snippets uh, with regards to that video right now decent uh, pullback and then from here moderate pullback uh, and here you are now is this a triggering event for a little bit of a corrective move. Now, everyone will go, oh, so you're bearish. No, no, and no. Macro, bull, Bitcoin, we have said and continue to state that you have had a left shoulder, head and right shoulder with a 25K neckline triggering event. All this is, is on the slow, on the lower time frames. we warned you, round about at 
uh, the 30k level not to take any leverage longs that could be corrective behavior holding on to your investment bitcoin would be absolutely prudent but you'll probably have a loss of uh, value for a certain period that may transpire so we're going to drop into this and how it's all played out on a uh, lower time frame so that you can see how charting truly can give you insight on multiple time frames and our hvf method and when done properly is the best way and approach for charting uh, across all time frames so let's go and dig a little deeper rising wedge three impulses to the upside decreasing sell-offs you could get remember they're not going to let the dollar this demonetization or this de-domination the domination of the dollar the reduction of the domination of the dollar they're not going to let it be a one-way bet for you uh, and they're not going to let gold silver go up in straight lines any more than bitcoin go up in straight lines so let's go in and let's watch uh the same things a little bit uh lower time frames so we're on the daily time frame there we're going to drop it i'm going to go straight in at the one hour first of all bring you up to date with what's uh the more recent action has been and let's bring it into here i'm going to switch the line on here so there's going to be quite a lot of stuff that's suddenly popping up so you did in fact have this particular uh, HVF structure, uh, that is a squeeze, there you go, all the way in there, like that, that was your turn. Now we pointed out that funnel there, that green line and that red line over there, coincided with a smaller fractal there. This is the principles of key levels of significance. So this is what's shown to be relevant by volume often, and I don't tend to do a lot of the volume analysis for free on YouTube, um, but definitely on the key levels of significance by targets and pattern structures you often get that funnel you can see that we've essentially formed funnel on funnel there was the previous one um, so key level what are you going to do well 29 saw you rejected really brutally over there let's go back to the transgender pink so that you can spot it a bit easier that 29k was rejected quite brutally boom and then uh, you sniffed at it and you got pushed back you wound up this was your squeeze to get rid of the 29k level and to get past that target that you had had there smash it up what did you do you projected this target over there but hold on there's two lines there yes what is that other line i'll be showing you that in a few minutes but in the meantime i'll tell you it is the downside target of the head and shoulder of the 64k that's right that head and shoulder we called that said you're going to run down all the way to 30,000 and that actually saw bitcoin trade 29k and you got that long period let's take you there so that we're not just talking because i visualize and can easily see these things it might be harder for someone who doesn't have a visual chart uh, mindset uh that was this one over here this head and shoulder over here and you can see that target right there there it is 29 it was 30,000 my apologies 30,284 that was that left shoulder that head oh let's wipe the face as well take all those other lines off that head, left shoulder that head and that right shoulder all the way down through the apex of the fag the two corners of that uh, flag channel right the way through you see all this mess here that's where we are today that's where we are today and that was the level that's run so it's a small it's not dying this is not a death throes uh, capitulation but there is a possibility that you get a little bit of a rest and a little bit of a pullback at these levels and that was the structure from whence all of that came so we go back in fact we'll go right the way to no it's gonna stay with an hour uh, and put the light back on there so you'll see these levels so two levels met you got the upside hvf structure which is this one that we just shown to you ba -ba -ba -da -da -da, like that running that level and you have the legacy this is known as a confluence of targets very very interesting so we're going to say we also got our second interim which is where you're bouncing and forming a possible rising wedge we'll come and talk about that a bit more in a bit now i'm going to go into all of this textual writing just to give you a small idea of how you can really unlock the secrets through patterns alone and that you don't need much else 
And in fact, most other things are counterproductive. Most other things are counterproductive. Everyone who has a moving average on their chart or an RSI, I'm like, oh dear, oh dear. People that are moving away from price behavior, people who are moving away from patterns to be sold lagging, mathematically created lines that mimic and move but slower and later than the actual price behavior. They want the same representation, same data, but manipulated by a mass formula. And I, and I kind of feel sorry for uh, th that. I mean, it's just such a fool's gold of, there's so many people that read books on technical anal analysts and they created this indicator and they created that. These were all failed traders, all failed traders that made money selling books and selling courses and indicators. Um, so there we go, Bob right left shoulder this is your head uh, over here and then this is a possible left shoulder and the key round number is the 29800 so we speak about that left shoulder you can see this over here uh, nice and clear that there was potentially a little bit of downside reckoning to consider with Bitcoin left shoulder then a basing ascending grind line Pop up, 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 all the way along. It's actually a trumpet, a hand trumpet. Da, 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 yep, there you go. And then as you break there, as you break there in the blue box, let's take it in, let's take it right down into the 15 minute for you. This is, God, I don't trade 15 minutes. I don't get involved in uh, those level of time frames. I'm just illustrating a point of when you have proper technical patterns and I've drawn this I've just shown this uh, to the community and I decided I'll give this a free share as well um, and what did you actually get this trumpet all the way up and where did the blue sell off and the capitulation come oh coincidence of all coincidences our neckline that we chose for another head and shoulder which is your monarch and primary head and shoulder there that capitulation occurred there. Round number, neckline, and just so happens to coincide with our basing ascending grind line, the intersection point. So not only did you get the break price level that it would occur, you got the actual time and price level coordinate, literally the sniper circle of our logo right in there. Bang, that's when it's gonna happen, and it's to the downside, bang, that's your target to the downside. Would I bother to trade that? No, no, no. I'm not watching Bitcoin on 15 minutes. Sorry, we're kind of real busy. There's lots of markets to watch. Uh, I'm not watching. Only if I'm expecting a fractal of something. So there was your trumpet. It's a broadening structure. It's a hunt trumpet. There you go. Uh, that's what we were blowing. Grinding higher but getting wider. What do you get? You get the left uh, shoulder. You get the head. Oh, by the way, on that very point, you got a sub bagel inside here running across. Bang. That's the point that you sold to make your second armpit over there for this key round number at 36. That gave you this head and shoulder, which now adds a third target line to a confluence of targets. That's a head and shoulder, a huge one from the 64 Bitcoin high that I just went and showed you, that told you at that 64K was the high, you were gonna fall, that was 47 and a half neckline, and it fell all the way sub 30,000. You had a target of 30,283, bang, number one. The second target is the HVF that you've just seen on the hourly and two hourly to the upside coming up from above. So a confluence of two key targets, and now this tiny, head and shoulder, monarch, which is at the top of a broadening structure. There's your broadening structure, the hunt trumpet, all through the bagel, and you got the moment and second bang, where the spiller, the absolute thriller, would take you through all three lines, bang, made to the downside. What happened next? We are taking you micro into the behavior of Bitcoin technically. There is no one who will do this for you to this level. So here you are, that warning we gave you last week. Be careful, do not rush in with leverage longs to the upside on Bitcoin, despite us being bulls. Now is not the time. What happened? That confluence of target turns into a stall box. 
So you are straddling the key levels of significance. Three targets, including a mini monarch head and shoulder. That you have just had explained to you. That's right, my friends. No one does this. Uh, then you have your locust burger patty there, the World Economic Forum's uh, version. That's your blue bun around your three confluence purple insect patty. Uh, and you are pivoting around it. That's called straddling price behavior. Oh, you kick out the top. Where do you uh, resist? At the neckline of what is effectively a return move after straddling that price behavior. You then fizzle. Believe it or not, believe it or not, you actually have shouldering here and a super high blow off head. That, if you accepted that this was around 3250 neckline and that was through 3600. You would have at least $350 fall to the downside from the 250 mark. Um, and so you would have gone down, 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 down. And you would have looked for 29900 That, wait for it, would have been made as a, a target to the downside. Even if I'd cared to draw this one for you. Too much text, too much detail. You would have, your mind would have been blown. But that is a fractal of a head and shoulder where all the confluences of targets were serving as necklines. How about that? And that blow off head just happened to revisit the neckline of the previous monarch head and shoulder that we've just given you with the draw through the round number, logical round number of 30,600. There you go, guys. You're getting micro analysis on Bitcoin. But hold on, what's this blue circle about? We've got to do this. We've got to put it on the 30 minute and just show you. Oh, there's another bagel that was drawn. This is a solid bagel. It went through armpit number one, which is at 29.8, logical round number. It went through some lows here, 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 and here. And it's intersected at the confluence. That basing ascending grind line has intersected at the confluence of all these other targets and has the exact moment that you capitulate out of that straddling key level of significance, a little bit above, a little bit below, a little bit above, a little bit below. So not only have you had this happen here on the Monarch that gave you the neckline uh, and the bagel intersection gave you the moment of the capitulation. You're getting the moment of the capitulation using grind line theory where the only person who can teach it to you is yours truly, Francis Hunt. Hit the first link in the details below. Book a call to truly understand charting and grind line theory, HVF method and all the manners about which we do technical analysis. With that spill, you run down to logical round number as well as making the target of this little head and shoulders that I gave you, all the way down to 29,800, which coincides with the other armpit, armpit one, armpit two. This gives you a problem now because the warning we gave you might have a little bit more uh, road to run before it's concluded. So you have a 29,800, you have a left shoulder over here. You saw that bagel intersection with the, the confluence of all the targets over there. You broke down, you've had a wee bounce, and then you've triggered the neckline at this juncture and you have broken down. Where have you paused? Freak, oh freak of coincidences. You have paused at that second interim of that same HVF that we had drawn that's just to the left, for which the two funnels were overlaid on top of each other as we had already warned and described. So with that interim level, you are actually pausing on your downside another coincidence of a multitude of coincidences in HVF methods, technical analysis of Bitcoin. So you have had, to summarize, you have had a breakdown from this zone. Let's go with the uh, pink so it pops. You've had a breakdown uh, from here. You've had a breakdown from there after revisiting the neckline. You had a breakdown through to the targets which you straddled. You revisited the neckline. You broke down to a new neckline for a possible bigger structure which you bounced from. You then triggered that. You're having a rest on a downside journey at an interim level of, of HVF structure to the upside. 
Wow. Okay. So what is the possibility of what comes next for Bitcoin is that further downside with the technical run of the 29800, you start running into targets, you start slowing down, you may even have a rally or you could continue down and you make the head and shoulder target to the downside, which if you were looking at this is 28628. We have the funnel of the HVF, which should serve as at least temporary if not full support so you could dip into this zone if it is a hard sell before finding support so the bullish of you could consider reinvesting in bitcoin to the upside and my bias for the macro is bull but how big the correction will be we don't know we've already had a monarch head and shoulder that has performed and now we are creating another broader one in the red with the left shoulder over here and the larger head over there which included the straddling period and the right shoulder which included the multitude of targets being run on the upside uh, which then led to the grinding trumpet uh, that sees you where you are now. So overall, there is risk of further downside on a short time frame. We're looking at H1. So in time frame analysis, you can be bullish macro. That can be yearly, monthly, weekly and daily and even four hourly potentially. But you can be bearish on the 15 minute, the 30 minute, the one hour and the two hour. For example, as an example in case, this is not a macro bear call. We are macro bullish, but we feel better entries are possible. This was the warning of the previous video that we gave you. Three surges, the final one, the smallest, needing a big, bigger corrective area. And now we are showing you head and shoulders on lower time frames embedded within ones with slightly bigger time frames that are giving bigger targets that could see this funnel. If we run this uh, funnel level low of 28136, you're likely to go lower. In that, if in that event, I need to go up to higher time frames, how low might you go? So we're going to take off all that splurge of data. So were you to run that low, which is the 28, call it 28120, uh, of that funnel how low might you go so we'll go to a eight hour that's only if it happens this could be enough just getting down to the funnel and supporting it could be enough you could square up we can rally we can do this uh, for example this is not chronic panic selling and you could square up you could get a nice secondary impulse you could get a nice third and we could squeeze and we could be making and getting ready for the next level up remember your overall bias should be bull i am never shorting worth leverage into a macro bull we only trade with leverage to the long side or we just sit investment long at the moment investment long is where we're sitting and we are waiting to see if we can get a a buy here with a tight stop which we'll take just above the funnel zone where the funnel zone is here that would be a great entry for additional investment you could use leverage but then you must have a stop at the low that I've already described uh, in the event that this pulls back further so we have a more fuddy environment we have the dollar trying to fight back you know this de-dollarization they're going to push back against all of this these causes this is where you could then see up to and just ignore the text now and just look over here down here you could technically come all the way back to the neckline and still be in a macro bull market the invalidation of our entire macro bull by basis is right down at the right shoulder of the inverted head and shoulder the right shoulder here bang however to get down there we'd see you having to run a lot of legacy support levels that have been laid down along the way but i refer you again to the rising wedge that we showed you um, right in the very beginning there can at some point be the potential for uh, some pushback and this may already be the beginning of the move however normally the moves show a certain degree of momentum this is not particularly scary in fact you had a harder spill 
finding that low over there that came quite late in the move even that single candle is bigger than any single candle that you've got bearish there so this looks like little pippy correction which i would imagine will support above or before the funnel level of the wine most events if however it gains momentum and there's suddenly fud and the dollar gets a big bid and they're creating fear you would expect the worst case scenario to bring you back to here uh, it will be a fail if we ever run the right shoulder there that would be a big big fail so a revisit to neckline is possible but it's going to take some big big drama uh, and i'm not sure that's what's coming so i think you're in the in the space for minor and moderate correction that is our take on uh, bitcoin uh, what about Ethereum? Because we mentioned something around silver and many of your crypto guys, why do you care about silver? Well, there's a kind of relationship or a similarity, silver uh, versus uh, gold. So silver broke out of its uh, continuation pattern, which is, is uh, after gold has done the same. So gold, quick heads up over here so gold broke broke its capping descending grind line again bigger time frames some of you don't know this um you can see the, there it is uh i'll take that there you can see the break there and it has now been higher i'm going to take that text and i will just make it disappear for a while so there you go and it had a little bit of a further overrun and it came back now silver was lagging gold on that front so we go to silver and we have a look at him but has also now broken and it coincided literally to the day with ethereum suddenly getting a bid so this is the silver market remember these are monetizable metals not just purely industrial metals although silver has a huge industrial use um, and here you can see this was as silver broke and in fact we did some charts on that let me see if i can get those up and show you so here we are, I just put the two charts underneath each other. I've done a draw for you um, underneath. Here you'll see silver's last four candles, basing, low vol and turning up with a look one way, go the other way. And you can see the last four candles of silver taking it through that triggering point at that moment. Uh, silver versus the dollar. And of course, this is Ethereum versus Bitcoin, not the dollar. So what are we suggesting here? We are suggesting that in time, you will get an opportunity where this squeezes and Ethereum will start overperforming Bitcoin, not yet called, not yet called, but potentially coming. This will highlight a larger alt run, which will be good for your alts generally, unless it's a really poor token. So just bear that one in mind. So to do like for like comparison, I've also compared Ethereum's upside against Bitcoin with gold versus silver on the gold silver ratio. And I will actually invert this for you in another chart. But generally people talk about the gold silver ratio. So you can see the gold silver ratio trading down for down candles inside our broadening structure. We expected it to slow down and it has. And we expect it to get a rally less good for metals gold will go down less than silver silver might go down a bit more only for this then to break down a lot faster later potentially so we expect to come out of this broadening structure to the downside that means silver will be outperforming remember that's gold silver whilst this is ethereum bitcoin not bitcoin ethereum so this guy going up and that one going down so what i've done is just so that they instead of being inverted is i've taken uh, the gold silver ratio uh, and i said hold on let's just turn it around let's just turn it around uh, so you have something like this this just shows that there is a degree of correlation so that is silver now the smaller being divided by the god market in the same way that ethereum is the smaller being divided by crypto's god market bitcoin and you can see the correlations in these down legs far from perfect but generally a down leg beginning in an upswing this had a very steep upswing so it got a lot of of its upswing done ethereum had two bites and a little bit of a longer one to get back up 
so sometimes one reacts more. The bear side, you can see uh, that was probably close to the top. You made a localized high, you made one marginally higher, and then you were flattening out and selling off. During that period, silver was also largely down. Then we got the rally. Silver had a, uh, my apologies, Ethereum had a rally. Then we got a sell-off on silver. You had a broad reduction in value or in Ethereum relative to Bitcoin. And now silver is working its way to the upside in the relative value stakes versus gold. Generally, although that's turning now as we are getting a little bit of dollar pushback a little bit of everything so this will uh, just have a little pull down to the downside and ethereum might just rest a little bit might just rest a little bit but longer run we expect this to do something like that calm down and then we expect it to set up a nice squeeze structure the same for silver uh, not got the same uh, proportionality but you can see something similar like this eventually brewing as this pulls over and down and then later goes as well okay so that is the interesting parallel of silver as ethereum and gold as bitcoin uh, and i hope you found that uh, interesting so good what have we covered in this video so far we've covered the reason why you shouldn't be too aggressively long in uh, the, the bitcoin we've also highlighted that We've done dominance before and it's worth re-mentioning that the 47.5 and the run of the 48 could be a real resistance for Bitcoin. Now you have that information. Let me just take it to maybe even a three day. You can see the rejection at these key levels that we've shown many times before. We've shown you them on the low side over here, how there's regularly support at 40. Longer run, this could slip a little bit and how you've had consistent at these two levels, the 47 and a half and the 48.1 consistent rejection on Bitcoin dominance. And that started last time I spoke, there was just this grinding upwards, you dipped. You finished the 48.17 and now you are spilling. What has that shown? It's shown that Ethereum is hanging on to its value better at the moment than Bitcoin, which got more of the money. And it's showing that this is again serving the 47.5 and the 48.17 as a key resistance point for Bitcoin dominance. After calling that upside level of percentage, way down here on the on the flag break which came pretty quick and pretty fast so let's finish with ethereum on its own against the dollar how's it doing well ethereum on its own against the dollar and i'm going to keep this in the logs chart because we're above a daily measure this will just expand it a bit you may recall head and shoulder here again huge lefty for a head and then a big, big, my apologies for a left shoulder, big head over here, down, down, down. And then a flag structure for a right shoulder, all with the neckline 2250. With a floating, slightly submerged shoulder there. The target that gave 1047 to the downside was made. In fact, you traded sub 1000 on a spike. Didn't last for long retrace move up to the two grand the 2k is a very key level pull back so you bounced a little bit you churned on the two grand then you rallied back up you can see this price behavior in fact let's go to the daily now and we'll let go of the three day now you know why these levels are there clean our face a little bit there and pull this tighter so that you can see these key points one more time so the 2000 is a key level Again, you've got a, a set of circumstances where you've been squeezing higher. Very, very tightly, low vol squeezing higher through here in for Ethereum. And you've popped and run the key level that is 2000. Again, this is bullish. That was an inverted structure on the 2000. You spilled, you return moved, you formed again, and you absolutely threw it down and you traded sub 1000 a 900 number now you've done a w bottom with that as a neckline a more of a rounded 
right butt cheek and a steeply church steeple inverted left one, a sharp one there. Now you squeezed higher and you ran the 2K uh, level. So you're getting relative overperformance out of Ethereum and I expect that generally to last, but I don't think it's a runaway train bull. If Bitcoin comes back to the 25, this could come back to the 2000. But I'm still expecting Ethereum to tiny bit overperform. Remember that structure of FBTC. So there is scope to start introducing in your investment pot, not leverage trading, Ethereum at the 2000 level on any return neckline uh, on this W bottom. Again, as we've highlighted, that uh, return uh, would see a nice juicy target of 4,500 be broken, in our opinion, to the upside after such a downside. Again, macro bull. Ethereum, macro bull Ethereum. We're waiting for a breakout over performance on Ethereum and we're expecting it to slowly claw back ground against Ethereum, uh, against Bitcoin. So we continue to expect the Bitcoin dominance to come off because of the Ethereum's performance. Generally, assuming some of the better quality other alts are also getting the same, such as, say, for example, an ADA, and Binance is holding up okay, etc., uh, etc., et those others that are making up the top 10, the best of the rest. Let's just go over who those typically are uh, as a wee reminder. So, cancel all the stable coins. So, we'd be talking about BNB holding up. XRP not getting any further sold off and hold up. Cardano I mentioned. I do expect Doggy to drift off again. Matic holding up strong. Solano has been on the rebound and then you have Polkadot, Litecoin, the likes of. So I would say the main ones here, Polka, Cardano, XRP, BNB and Ethereum all holding and doing the bigger numbers. Note how that relative FBTC relative low to pivot and turn event that coincided with silver has seen a seven day performance 10 times that of Bitcoin. Seven day performance 10 times that of Bitcoin the rotation. You've also seen 9% 9 times that of Bitcoin. You've seen 12% out of uh, ADA against Bitcoin where Bitcoin gave you 1% the last seven days. So literally the week that has passed which we were discussing in our community in the premium air uh, area click the first link below in the details to book a call to see if it's suitable for you uh, you have had out performance of the alts even doggy which i don't trust particularly as an elon play thing matic has done five solana 20 percent in the last uh seven days polka dot seven light point six so most of them five to ten times what bitcoin did last week as the dominance is reversing, as the dominance is reversing, and I expect that dominance to continue to reverse unless we get an extreme sell off all the way down to the 25, in which case Bitcoin could hold its own and even claw a little bit back uh, towards the 47, assuming some of the old slip. But at the moment, I'm expecting F uh, and the likes to be relative out performers, uh, even if in this moderate pullback environment okay that's it that's your crypto update from yours truly the market sniper a uh, little bit of a look at both bitcoin dominance i haven't done bitcoin against any of the other things the nasdaq and all of that we will update you can get those kind of updates in the community you can use simple fx below you can use um got pure gold links if you want to accumulate gold and silver uh share a picture on our twitter follow us on the crypto sniper holding a thousand ounces of silver. Man, that feels like real money, I tell you what. And beautiful 100 ounce bars and 10 ounce bars by Arizona Scottdale. I suggest having a stable of horses rather than a single who you think is going to be the fast horse. I suggest having digital alternatives and physical alternatives to the fiat debt failing system that is going down right now. Do not commit to one because they have strengths and weaknesses in both areas. Having many will serve you well. With that, I love you and leave you and give you a salute. Goodbye uh, and see you next time. Don't forget to like and share. We appreciate it. Bye for now.